Caitlin, man. Let me let me speak to you right quick, guys. Go ahead, go ahead, mute yourself, guys. Let me just say this to Caitlin, man. Caitlin, man. It's a lot of people out here telling you that you know your biggest problem is these WNBA lesbos hating on you over your game and trying to haze you and bully you prior to and when you do get into the WNBA. But let me tell you something, Caitlin. That's not going to be your problem, Caitlin. Caitlin, your biggest problem is going to be not getting involved in any of that stupid BLM bullshit that these WNBA hoes be all on board with. All the comments about every fucking police action interaction with a son, man. Every fucking cause that comes across their fucking doorstep that they get involved in and try to champion. Everything that they get involved in where it's outside of the game of basketball. That's why nobody likes the WNBA. That's why people are turned off by the WNBA. That's why people groan when they whenever these broads talk. Caitlin, I'm asking you, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, Caitlin. Please do not comment on any police interactions between criminal suspect sunmen. Do not comment on any viral videos, snippets of interactions between white people and black people, a la barbecue, Becky, and all that coupon call and all that BS. You don't have nothing to say about that. Next question. And you can you gotta come up with a polite way to brush these off because I promise you they are going to require you to speak on these issues, man. And that's going to make you not popular. Once you go woke, Clayton, um, Caitlin Clark, this all this shit is over with. It's the wrap once you go woke. Once you start kneeling and make you giving your opinion about fucking some son man getting pulled over like in Chicago with a um Derek Dexter Reed or in Florida with um Calvin Riley where they say they planted the evidence all that shit is malarkey as y'all was saying Iowa Caitlin please I'm begging you Caitlin stay away from that shit because I promise you, if you start with them in the protest and the t-shirts and the hashtags and the causes, I every day is something with these whores. I mean, they're on board with everything. It's always some new movement. They like they don't have a game where they not in some fucking t-shirts protesting something or standing up for somebody or fighting against this and da 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 that vote for this person all this bullshit vote for this democrat person uh get out the vote um this person's racist Abolish the police, um, BLM. Stay away from that shit, Caitlin, because I promise you, man, I'm out.
I'm all on board with the with the bullshit, Caitlin. I mean, I'm all on board with your with your, with your with your movement, Caitlin. I'm all on board with it, okay? I'm one thousand percent. You you got me. Wherever you want to go, you want to play in Russia. I'm gonna be watching the games of Russia and, and trying to via satellite the games in Russia and shit. If you go over there to play. But as soon as you start doing stupid shit like showing up to the game with a shirt with bullet holes in the back, representing Jacob Blake and shit like that, and kneeling for the anthem or just leaving the court when it's time to do the anthem, coming out with shirts to say arrest the cops who killed Breonna Taylor, even though we all know what happened there, I did uh 16-part series on that um called Inside the Breonna Taylor Drug Cartel. Make sure y'all check that out. It's on YouTube. Please, I'm begging you, Caitlin. Stay away from that shit. Once you go there. You got to understand, Caitlin, that's part of your appeal. That's part of your appeal that you're just a regular white girl from Iowa who's all ball, who's sweet, who's nice, don't have no tattoos, not trying to be down with the sisters and shit. You're not apologizing because for your success like Paige Becker's. You just all ball and you keep your freaking mouth shut. As soon, and, and I know these WNBA girls are going to try to pressure you into getting in on board with that shit. They're going to pressure you to try to, they, they, they might even try to get you with a little cause, like somebody might fucking kill a fucking whale somewhere and they might try to get you to fucking wear a shirt about the whale and then now you in and now it's this now it's well you wore a shirt about the whale a black guy just was killed in a car accident in and in a, in a, in an incident with a cop and you you protest whales whales are more important than black people like so you gotta just stay away from that shit completely i mean 100 percent stay away from these black girls and these white trans activist and LGBT activists and all this crap. Stay away from that shit 100%. If they ask you to try to get, I got a ball, I got shots to get up, man. I got to practice. I got to go do some endorsements. I really don't have time. I mean, sorry, da, da, da. Make up an excuse. But under no circumstances, do anything woke. Because once you do, this whole wave is over. What are your thoughts about that, guys? You're making me tear I mean, up. That was, that, was fire. That, was, that was great, man. <laughs> um, as long her dad is a little strong, so and she's got a glider boyfriend, so hopefully they keep her on the straight and narrow. She's the only hope for. I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw what I typed in the chat, but. She needs to just focus on like, like breaking those bucks when she makes it to the next level. Just keep buck breaking, you know. Keep making them cry and and, and say everything is 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 racism. Like you drop fifty on them and, and and win those those championships and MVPs and, and just dominate them. I yeah I agree. If she don't like, if they're gonna always try to attack her, and as as long as she play her game. That's it. Don't respond. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Same way. Was Man, she the one that gotta, when she what? was she the one that when she won an award she started talking about a whole bunch of other stuff? Or was that no? Nah, that was Paige. That was Paige. Beckers. That's Paige Beckers. She was the one over there talking that stupid shit about um about I'm here for black women. Black women have. All this bullshit. Um, 
trying to like kiss black women's asses when really I'm telling you, man, there's nothing you can do to please them. There's nothing you can do. They're going to respect you more if you like, yo, fuck y'all niggas. Text to read. I ain't never heard of him. Y'all do my job and go home. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. It's 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 like the Michael Jordan effect. Michael Michael never got into politics because you know Republicans buy sneakers too. Yeah. Let me show you how crazy these sisters are. These sisters in the WNBA are so embarrassing. Let me show you how the, the shit they put these white girls through. This is this, let me show you the shit they put these white girls through. Us as black women. This is Kelsey Plum. She had the college record for points before Caitlin Clark just won it. I mean, just 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 um um broke the record. She's the reigning WNBA MVP, right? Isn't it her? Or is it she's a she's a she's a WNBA all-star? Put it like this. She's a she is a made chick in the game of basketball. College. And pros. This is Asia Wilson from South Carolina. She's won MVP in the WNBA twice. They're teammates. They travel together and they do everything together. Listen to what this embarrassingly woke black chick says to this girl. They remind me a lot of like, you say you're not really about me. She knows, and she knows how her privilege has gotten her to that point. And also, like, she's good at that. Like, she understands her privilege. Yeah. Do you hear that? She understands her privilege. What? Yo, yeah, I, I don't know. I, this is going to be tough for, for Caitlyn, man. This is going to be I'm, tough. Bro, this is gonna, her talking to her friend. friend. This yeah. is her, her, fr- her teammate. This is yeah. this is the type of shit they talk about because they don't know. I don't think they know that they're being recorded. This is the type of conversations these black girls put on these white girls. This white girl is the all-time leading scorer in college basketball history until about two weeks ago when Caitlin broke it. She's a multiple-time WNBA All-Star. She's her teammate. They're on the same team. They won the championship last year. And this is the type of shit you got to hear about just when you're fucking watching the game. Yeah, she's not going to. I don't think she's going to make it out. Because this one is wow. probably telling them, I understand. Now, she scored the most points in college history, I told you, until like two weeks ago. So she probably tells them, like, yeah, she probably fell into this bullshit. Yeah, my privilege is the reason that um, I scored the most points in college basketball. <laughs> Some stupid shit like my, that. My You're privilege right. scored all those points for me. That seems like but the this, opposite of privilege. Yeah, but here's the thing. Black girl, Dawn Staley, when Dawn Staley was in college in, in the early 90s, I lived in D.C., she went to Virginia. Virginia is like one of our local teams. Virginia, Maryland, and Georgetown. Them three big teams back in the day. Dawn Staley was a superstar. She was a mega superstar in that area when she was in college. And she's black. Shamika Holesclaw. Cheryl Swoops. Cheryl... Um, 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 Cheryl Miller, all superstars. This whole shit they talking about, like, well, you gotta be white to get attention. That's bullshit. This broad just doesn't listen. Let me just show you something about this broad right here. Let me show you that broad, Asia Wilson, right? Asia Wilson crying, talking about um, there's there's some privilege thing going on, right? 
the the other girl the other girl got privilege right because she's white right in in asia not getting the opportunities because you know black girls don't get no attention let me show you something this yeah, asia will go ahead yo yo these like i know black men are like they do like the woke shit too but it feel like black women are like they're on a whole different stratosphere with this shit. It's like it's like they're in, entire they're engulfed in this shit way more, bro. Like look at her on Colbert. She's on Colbert two months ago, and she's telling this other white girl about, oh yeah, your privilege puts you over the top. ESPN. They're, they're saying look at her girl. on the view. On the fucking view. Two months ago, she was on the view. Discussing her book. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. She she's better off taking that big three I off. They only now. published white women basketball players. Yo, this girl on Draymond Green's podcast, very popular podcast. Look at her on um Jennifer Hudson show five months ago on all the smoke three months ago and she's talking to this white girl she was on good morning america two months ago <laughs> and she's talking to this white girl about well you have all this privilege that puts you over the top caitlin stay away from these bitches man I, I don't know i i don't know i this is gonna be hard for her man Bro, this, this is a, her this book is called lead, dear bro. black girls how to be yeah he, you. <laughs> It's a whole league, and this is gonna be tough. I I don't think she's gonna be able to make it, bro. They're gonna they're gonna break her, dog. She's gonna be doing the black girl magic parade with them and shit. And then when she wins MVP, she's gonna be saying the same <laughs> shit the other bitch is saying. Like, you know, I know I know I won the MVP, but this really this is really all of our awards, you know? Because I gotta I gotta include the black <laughs> women too. Wow, yeah, she, but you would, off. Broad, you would think this broad was getting completely ignored, right? By what she said to that white girl. Yeah, she's better off taking that big offer from the big three. I mean, even though that's a, like a little gimmick, she's better off with that. Cause I don't yeah, think she's I, gonna make. I don't think I she's gonna make you. it. Listen, man, I, 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 I think she should go to the WNBA because that's her dream. That's what she wanted. This chick was the number one overall pick in the draft. <laughs> she came out. And she's talking to the white girl like, you have all this privilege that puts you over the top. Like, yo, there's, they don't want to, some of the power. They want all of the power, all of the attention. They want the white girls to have nothing. And you can't fucking get in bed with people like that, even a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time I was um don't looking for an apartment. Me and my um wife, we were, she was my girl back then, and we was looking for an apartment. We was over there in Northeast, some area. It was a, it was a rough area in Northeast. I didn't I, I I wasn't you know like I don't have people around there or nothing like that. It's not an area where I've ever frequented or knew people from. And um, we went to the apartment and we were looking at the apartment. And after we looked at the apartment, we were walking back to the car. And his brother right there, he was he looked like a maintenance man or something, but he was like dressed in like regular clothes or whatnot. And he and he looked at us and he said and he, and, he, and he said, hey man, um. Be careful living around here, man. If you um if you come around here, if you want if you want to move around here, don't open no doors for these people. Don't 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 ask a motherfucker for a cigarette. Don't say hi. Don't ask a motherfucker for a a a, a, a teaspoon of sugar. Nothing. Don't open no doors with these people because these people around here are foul. As soon as as soon as you know they get to um, feel like feeling a little bit comfortable with you, they're gonna snake you. They're gonna start some shit with you. They're gonna spread rumors. They're gonna um, try to start some like bullshit drama with you and shit. Um, 
So he said, don't say nothing to these people around here. Just go to, just get out your car, walk to your um apartment, and go inside, and that let that be that. Don't try to make friends with none of these people. And I was like, thanks, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> We got the car, we rolled out, we ain't never, man. We ain't fucking <laughs> calling people back or nothing because we were supposed to like sign the paperwork and shit. I was like, I was like, thank so, you, my nigga. Thank you. Yes, that was a blessing. Yeah, man. Old head dude, man. I guess he just saw us like we probably looked at us and was like, we ain't belong there. See you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Man? But this was back like 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 we had got put out of one apartment. This is back we were struggling, you know what I'm saying? It was it was it wasn't like it is now where you know what I'm saying kind of stable. It's just before my YouTube days and shit. This is when I was, you know, you know, working and shit, and DC prices was so crazy, like they want two thousand dollars, twenty four hundred for one bedroom and half bathroom. So it's like Sound yeah, like Jersey. Man. DC was crazy back then. It still is, but it was it was just, you know, it just is what it is, man. Um, I had to move to Pennsylvania to get a house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But um, yeah, man. Um listen, man. Bless me. I was like, thank God, man, because I've been around hoods, and once he said that shit, I started. Thinking this, I'm like, yeah, that's how we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how we is around. Them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't want none of that. I don't want no smoke like that with niggas. I don't know. So I was like, yeah, man. Thank you, my G. But yeah, this this whore right here, man. Like, and and I, I, she's probably a nice woman, but yo, man, come on, baby. Look at you. You on every fucking show. And you got the nerve to tell that white girl that her privilege puts her over the top when she ain't been on none of these fucking shows. Hey, Ak, look, here's the line from her book. Despite gold medals, WNBA championships, and a list of accolades, Asia Wilson knows how it feels to be swept under the rug, not to be heard, not to feel seen, and not to be taken seriously. <laughs> As a fourth grader going to a primarily white school in South Carolina, Asia was told she'd have to stay outside for a classmate's oh, birthday party. Uh, huh? She asked. So she because the birthday him. girl's father didn't like black people. She won. Yeah, him. with Asia Wilson. Uh, she grew up around white people. Now, uh, I, I hate those motherfuckers. Like, they come, they grew up around white people, loved it. Loved it growing up around white people. Now they got around black people like in college and they trying to be all militant and relive there and try to make up for all the black shit they miss. You ain't miss nothing, baby. Okay? You didn't miss nothing not being around Boy, niggas. that was years. sick. <laughs> they got proved they still black. Exactly. Now with Asia Wilson, oh college God. basketball powerhouse, back-to-back -back WNBA champion, two-time MVP of the league, one of Usher's biggest fans. That wasn't enough. Now she's an author. She's here to tell us about her debut book, Dear Black Girls, How to Be True to You. Good morning. Hey, can you give it up for Asia Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. You know we have to play Usher for it. Usher. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's at, you know, you're from Vegas now. Yeah. He's at the Super Bowl halftime. Yes. You gonna be there? Oh yeah, of course I'm gonna be there. I'm oh. super excited. I feel like it's an Usher concert with a little bit of football. So um, I'm super excited. <laughs> you hoping to get down on the field? I know. Yeah, you. I have to. I feel like I have to be there. I'm manifesting it, so okay. we'll see. Well, we know what happened last time when right. we talked. It. Right, right. You, you never concert. know. I know. <laughs> Can I just tell you, this weekend absolutely devoured your book. Yes. It's <laughs> like it was like reading a dear diary. I was listening. It was your voice. Why did you write it in that style? Well, I feel like it's just an easy read it that way. And I think it's more relatable. Uh, I wanted it to be a book that like, it was kind of like a journal. It's a mm -hmm. dear diary, like you said. And I just felt like the young kid with dyslexia, it's, it's easy. It's harder to read chapters. So it's easier if it's like a journal diary form. And I just have fun writing it that way. Cause like you said, if people can hear my voice and they can really understand it, I feel like it resonates more. Yeah, you just said about dyslexia because yeah. you, one of your entries, mm -hmm. it's about those who have challenges in learning yeah. okay mm -hmm. and you learn later later yeah. in life that you have dyslexia so what was it that you were trying to tell those girls 
That, you know, I always say run your race at your own pace. And I think mm. that's the biggest thing that I wanted to get across was like, we all are coming from different paths of life, different ways that we're healing and growing together. And that's okay. Like you're- Well, then how come the white girls don't get that fucking pass, that benefit of they're just, why, why don't you give them that grace? okay to learn a little late that doesn't mean that something's wrong with you it's just a matter of you learn late and that's okay and i felt like for me with the platform that i have and where i come from i wanted young girls to kind of see that i struggle as well Mm -hmm. because in a uniform people could say oh she's perfect she's got it together but and white girls struggle too life ain't a fucking bed of roses for white girls either especially not now try walking down the street in fucking manhattan being a white girl (sighs) I wanted to show that I'm a little different. Yeah, you did. And I'm so thank you for sh- for sharing about therapy. Yes. And especially in the black community. Yes. Hey, just tough it out. Yes. You don't need any help. Right. But you really wanted to go there and yeah. show others. Yeah, I had to. I feel like that's what's needed. Like we always go through the trauma, but we never talk about the other side of it, the mm-hmm. healing, taking care of ourselves. And I wanted to just make sure that I could do that. You did that mm-hmm. so well. And you did not hold back. Can't. You I know you can't <laughs> that's Asian will so well. I can't hold back. Uh, you you were talking about how how you feel um players are sometimes treated differently yeah. by fans, yeah. you even said by refs, yeah. social media, something that you call the mouse trap. Yeah. Explain that. The mouse trap is one of these things where I'm like, we see it coming, we kind of see it, but just don't fall for it. Don't get, get caught up in it because I feel like as black women, particularly in sports, we're always the ones that get kind of like the shady comments or being petty and the things Yo, oh, he's more uh, petty than uh, w and black WNBA players. He's a two-time MVP. The the writers voted her MVP twice. The writers, not the players. The writers voted her MVP twice. That we do it a little. She wanted to win it every year. That's what it is. A white girl won it last year. Um, Brianna Stewart, the the girl from UConn. So she mad. She was mad that the white girl won it last year. We're different, but we can't fall for that. Like, yes, we're all bringing up each other, one another. Like, we're holding hands. We're there together. But it's okay to have a little rivalry. It's okay to be fiery and petty. I feel like my Twitter is full of pettiness. So I think it's a healthy balance of, like, don't lose yourself in the mix. Mm, I know. And you did not hold back. And, and it was really good about because people remember last year, Caitlin Clark, yeah. the Angel Reese, LSU, yeah. Iowa, and I, People need to read the book to get your take on it like that. Um, there's somebody that you hold very dear to you, yes. and that is your grandmother. Yes. Oh, God. So anyway, man, so she she's not going to thank any of those white people. I'm sure in that white town she grew up with, being one of the few black people, I'm sure those people treated her wonderful. I'm sure there's a bunch. I'm sure the reason she made it to the WNBA I'm sure she didn't have to fight in the street fucking whores trying to pull her tracks out and shit, cut her (laughs) face. Vaseline. She wasn't shot at six-year-old. Razor blades. She had to deal about (laughs) none of that shit in that town with them white people. And she on here, she ain't going to mention one of them in her book. Thanks uh, such and such for this and that. None of that shit. Niggas are on. Grateful. Olympic gold medalist, two-time WNBA MVP and WNBA champion Asia Wilson is not only a dominant force on the basketball court, off the court, she's also a vocal advocate for social justice, anti-bullying, education around dyslexia, and the recognition of black women in America. In her new memoir, Dear Black Girls, How to Be True to You, she shares a deeply personal Mm. collection of stories from her life, drawing from her own experiences growing up in South Carolina and navigating the world of professional basketball and joy. Joining us now is the reigning WNBA guess, champion, hey. Miss Asia Wilson. Thank you so much for coming. Hey. You're constantly reminding she can do us. Some wonders. Oh, oh, and you're a black about being a double minority, being black and and being a woman. I had a revolution, like in a the bubble, minority. like I had a time to really dial into myself. <laughs> and then that's when I got so much great traction from it. And I was just like, you know what? We can form this into a bigger story because I have more to tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, throughout the book, you, you talk about being a double minority, being black and, and being a woman. I want to quote you here. You say, uh, the truth is we're a double minority. It's like the world is constantly reminding us you're a girl. Oh, and you're a black girl. Oh, Tell me my. about how this intersectionality of, of gender the opposite, and race they're is reminding us. This is terrible. <laughs> Do they ever talk about basketball? Whoa. Absolutely not. Apparently she gets her opinion on the talk. 
That's what I'm telling Caitlin, man. Because you could be friends with these girls and they could key key and, 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 and talk to you and pull you in. And then next thing you know, they feeding you this, all this bullshit. And Caitlin is young. I, I, these are I, I, her heroes. These are her heroes. She looks up to these people. I know, I, but this is going to be hard for her to like. I don't want her to go to the league. I, it's going to be hard. It, like, it, she's not going to be able to make it through <laughs> three seasons. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fucking looking bad, man. Bro. <laughs> Bro, this shit, you know what's wild? This is not even the highest level. Imagine if she was like a uh, crispy pitch black. Looking like this kind of shit. This shit would be like ten times worse, bro. Yo, he's right. He's right. He's right. Like, uh, dear dark skinned black girls. Yeah, he's right though. Yeah, but I, I think I think I think it would be worse if she was a mulatto, man. Like, cause some crazy mulatto broad is trying to prove that she's black. Like, she, she got to stay with all of them, black to mulatto out the room. 4C hair, stay away from all them broads, man. And the white girls, because the white girls crazy too. Yeah. The woke shit. <sighs> Ain't it's no be... fucking conservative white girls in the WNBA. No, they all woke dykes. <laughs> Is she, yeah, all... she got it. Go ahead. No, no, no. Continue, continue. They, they all kiss black girls' asses, too. All the white girls bow and can see in, in the conciliatory or they um concede to the black girls and all their fucking whining and shit. They all believe in intersectionality and privilege and unconscious bias. All them white girls in the WNBA believe in all that shit. So Caitlyn gonna have to be. She gonna have to just stay to her fucking self. I mean, it's impacted my whole way of life, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, okay, when someone talking about the basketball, it's just like, okay, yeah, your your sport's not a sport because you're a woman. But then on top of that, we don't get looked at as much or viewed as much because we are black women, and mm -hmm. we may not. Bitch, you was just on the View. Now you on fucking ABC News. What the yeah, fuck are you talking about? In America. <laughs> You just do Good Morning America, bitch. What the fuck are you talking about, bitch? I look, it's the marketable type, or people may not want to see us. And it kind of, it, it's hard. People not want to see you. The writers who cover the game, they voted you MVP twice. But I think the beautiful thing that I found within it is just using my personality, uh, making people understand that I'm here. No, if th this is the, your personality sucks. That's why you're not popular, because this is your personality talking about this shit nobody wants to hear this shit men that i'm real that i go through things like yes you see me in a uniform yes you can see the banners the trophies and the rings but behind all that i'm a human i'm a young black girl that's trying to navigate this world that's not the nicest and understanding that i can still be successful in my field and love the world's on not the love nicest have fun from there you seems know, pretty nice it's become really kind of like a, a political hot rod in this country as far as like is america a racist country has right. it ever been right and and you share a story of a fourth grade sleepover share that with our viewers yes so I was in the fourth grade and one of my friends who I thought was really my close friend was having a birthday party and she was just like, yeah, you can come, but you can't stay inside the house. You have to stay outside uh, because my dad doesn't like black people. And that right there struck that me. That never happened. Because I was a young black girl in high it. school and I just thought- That we never were happened. Friends. I thought that we makes were all no sense. and we were all fair. I, I, I kind of realized as I grew up hold and hold my parents had to have that conversation with me that, you know, you're not really liked all the time, but that doesn't need to change who you are and who you want to become. And I kind of took that story, kind of struck my core for a while. And as I got older, it didn't get easier. But I just understood more of like understanding who I am and like how I want people to view me. And I continue to do that to plant seeds for the next generation. There was a part in the book that, that really struck me where you talk about life had never been so good and I had never felt so anxious and so afraid. Everyone always talks about the fear of failure, but the thing I never hear anyone talk about is the fear of success. Yeah. <laughs> Explain what that means for people who have never Yeah, man. I could believe I could believe that because I did have one of my friends 
He was a football player, got a scholarship and everything. Now, the glider dude was cool as hell. They had to partner up. But respect to the glider, he was like, yo, Jamal, I ain't going to hold you, man. My mom and dad ain't, they ain't going for that, man. They ain't trying to have a, a, a black kid in the house, man. Straight up said that, but he kept a, a buck with him. To this day, they cool. But that's understandable. No. That's did. that's what happened. Yeah, I totally agree. No, 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 no. I agree. Like, no, no. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. So I think it happened. So it's a little different from a black girl hearing that because at least the brother, he didn't, my friend didn't get offended. He's like, yo, I respect you for that. Every day they went to the library, did the project, and everything was cool from there. There was no beef, no animosity. Right, right. But a couple of things. First of all, what's the age difference between you and this woman? That's one question. The other, the other, like, are, is there a, it, like, and the second thing is that what you said makes more sense. Like, if you had parents that wouldn't allow that, you'd be like, listen, you just can't come over. Now, you got to come over, but you got to go in the doghouse. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you would yeah, just like say you just can't come over. Invited her over at all. Yeah, they would have just been like, we just can't invite you over at all. You know, it's a private party. And, my, you know, she would have made some other dumbass excuse. Bro, this is the thing, though, bro. It's, bro, it's perfectly plucked. You don't have to be racist to not want a black kid in your house, bro. Them niggas probably going to end up stealing something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly racist, what happened bro. to me. Yeah, actually. Yeah, them niggas yeah. probably going to steal every, your wallet, all your jewelry, your, t your yeah. black screen going to be missing. That's yeah, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it, man. But I just think for her, it it wasn't it wasn't a good look. It, it just the way the I guess the white girl said it. It wasn't a good look. Okay, let me tell you this. Let me say this. In that town, where she that all white town that she was raised in, mm -hmm. I'm sure that those white people, ninety nine percent of them, treated her great, and I'm sure even that incident. Agreed. Was a one-off for those people. I'm sure that girl treated her great. And yeah, the girl. girl's parents didn't like come out with a whip and beat her off the fucking. I'm sure even that interaction where they were like, "Yo, you know what I'm saying?" She, the the girl, that was not a bad interaction for her. I agree. I just think the parents was like, "Nah, I'm not having that kid in my house." And so I know, and like. With, with people that have experienced like actual racism, when somebody makes up a story like that, you know they're they're embellishing it a lot, and they've never experienced anything. Because if honestly that's the best thing they could possibly think of, they're just it. It's not even like it's nothing. Like it's, so, essentially, what you're telling me is you've experienced nothing. Because I've actually cool. experienced racism, and it's not. Trust me, it's far worse. Like what she said is like this, like nothing. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is like the stupidest thing to complain about. But I agree. She's guilt. She's got guilt because listen, man, growing up around white people, it and then you go around blacks like on a college campus. Like, so let's just say her first inner her first time being around black people was on the college campus, right? And everybody's all the black people are woke and easy. You know that you know black people are in college and shit, right? Yeah. So now she's getting involved with that, and they're like, "Yeah, so where you from?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm from Millersville or whatever the fuck town." And they're like, "Oh, you from there? Oh, I ain't no damn girl. Oh, you ain't. Oh, you you uppity bitch." And yo, she's gotta create this backstory of like, "Yo, well, I can't say I was a thug. I can't say I was hood chick. I can't say that. Oh, I know what I can do." I can say white people was mean to me, and that'll be a bonding thing with these right. black kids because you can bond mm -hmm. with black people over white people was mean to me. Right, mm -hmm. right, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly what she's doing. Because I'll tell you, like I, I grew up in that environment, so I, I don't know what it's like to not be around black people and not understand that shit. But I can only imagine if she grew up around white people, she's like, I don't even know how to navigate this. I gotta make yeah, something up. You understand? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even understand the lingo. I don't understand why they act this way. I don't understand any of this. I gotta, I gotta do something. Uh, white people yeah. do this. Stuff. Yeah, because you said you lived around two different type of gliders, so 
you kind of could relate. No, I lived around I lived around white people and black people. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like I was I was born in a black town and went to an all black school till you know my parents had to get me the fuck out of there. Nice. But the Thank whole neighborhood God. was still black, so it's like it's like if you don't grow up around any of that shit, like you don't it surprises the shit up when you're right. encountering it. You're like you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like like and that's the way white people react. Like when white people just stand there and they look all nervous and their eyes are like and they're just like looking around like what what's wrong with these people? Like this is like Alice in fucking Wonderland or some shit. Like yeah. I haven't been presented with the problem enough. Yeah, yeah and there's nothing wrong, but there's nothing wrong with those people. They're just No, there's different. nothing. They're just yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, they're that's just how you process it if you haven't seen it a thousand and a half times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, how black was in the source. Yeah. Yeah, like when people get angry, like when they get loud over stupid shit, you're like, you're like, uh oh, you know, it's like being yeah. out in the woods at night and like hearing something big move around in the bushes, like that kind of like fear comes over you, like what's what the hell's yeah. going on? Because if white people start acting like that, what, it's like one of them either like has some sort of weird ass aneurysm or you know something, and they're just going nuts. Like so, you you don't you don't get it, you don't see it. Yeah, and then seeing the way they behave towards cops has got to be terrifying. Like if you're a white kid. And you see the way blacks behave towards police officers. You got to be thinking, what will they do to me? <laughs> like, right. You know? right. At the end of the day, like, I, I mean, I knew black women that grew up in, like, in, like, white areas and had nice license. Like, oh, she, like, oh, I used to fantasize about the hood and shit. Like, why? Like, what the fuck are you mm. talking about? Like, why would you want that? You know what I mean? Like that sucks. Well, like, hold I, on, I can it understand. It can be very I, exciting, though. Yeah, no. I, and and also, also, time out, time out. That is our. That's our. You know, that's like Africa. That's like why did black people wear kunta cloth and and dashikis and shit and try to fake be Afrocentric? Because right. The hood is like our version of is like our American version of Africa. Right. It's I mean, like I, I, I where, yeah. where where you can be the blackest, where you can be like you can be black in the hood. You can like everything that's African um, is 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 in the hood. There's a fighting. Um, there's it's anti intellectual. Um, there's um joy in our way, there's laughter in our way, there's fun in our way, not like white like dancing people, and shit. Our wow, way. Yeah. Our yeah. Way. the food is our way. It's like not our fire, but full of black people. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no standards you have to hold yourself yeah, to. No, yeah. no, no, I, no, I will no say standard. no. So no the, civility, bro. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying of that that want to be that way but what i'm saying is like the, i think the guys that, that that pine over africa like they kind of make up their own fucking africa like oh, they're not yeah, pining still, over yeah they're not pining over like like real yeah, africa they, they're, they're, yeah, they're doing yeah. some afro futurism weird ass bullshit africa no shit fucking anthem was played we saw the players leave the floor go back to their respective locker rooms one of those actions we'll see throughout the season as part of the social justice initiative. Yeah, first of many ways that we will see WNBA plays, players using their voices all season long. This is nothing new for these women. They have been proactive when it comes to speaking out on social injustices for the life of the WNBA. Yeah, one of the... Champion, championing Welcome proud men the like Alton Sterling. 2020 presented by AT&T. Now let's send it to the court for a message from Brianna Stewart of the Seattle Storm and Lasia Clarendon of the New York Liberty. We are dedicating this season to Brianna Taylor, an outstanding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> bro. Oh, oh, God, bro. Man. It never ends. Yo, for real. <laughs> they found the fucking body in a car. Do y'all forget that? Fuck a body bitch. in her trunk. Fuck that dumbass whore and her ratchet ass son man. Well, they dedicating the whole season to her. So I mean, I don't know what the fuck you talk about. The whole season is dedicated to her. Damn. Um, but they, but they, what about they're they're forgetting about the guy in the trunk? 
I mean, they don't yeah. care about him. They don't give a shit about that guy. They don't give a shit about the fact that she was a fucking madam. She was a dog missus. She was active. They don't right, care about none of that shit, man. They're dedicating the entire season to her, man. Every single person they've ever had on their jersey has been active as fuck. <laughs> when when is this? Like two or three three years ago. Yeah, oh, that, years ago, yeah. Yeah, because it looks like it, they're in the bubble. So yeah, look I at mean, this. Look at look at this I, I shit that she got to deal with. Atlanta was turned up and Atlanta was protesting. Atlanta was upset. We stand today because of Breonna Taylor. There was a sort of political awakening. A multiracial coalition of conscience poured out into American streets. I was literally looking outside of my window at people upset. I first just started out just bringing water, and I wanted to do more and more. And then I felt like, how could I do more if I was half in and half out? And so I made the decision to just be all in. After much thought, I've decided to opt out of the 2020 WNBA season. There's work to be done off the court in so many areas in our community. I do. <laughs> this bitch left the team to go fucking be an activist. These are the type of. Bitches that fucking Caitlyn going to be around, man. I'm professional. <laughs> right. Right to this fuck. That now is the time. And moments equal momentum. Moments equal momentum. What did you mean by that? I meant that, like, look, the protest, that's adding moments, and it's adding to the momentum. Everybody thinks you got to do something amazing, and you really don't. You know, like, you just need to add your moment. That could literally be a tweet that somebody reads, but... Everybody has a moment. What were some of your biggest reservations when you thought about sitting out the season? I've been playing basketball, oh my God, since I was like five, you know, and it's, it's a part of my being. Giving that up was tough. I didn't know where that next check was coming from. Across the board, professional female athletes don't often make the same or even come close to what male athletes make. God damn. Yeah, it was it was a scary situation in that aspect, but honestly, I just took a leap of faith. Renee joined a long line of female athlete activists who have spoken up, from track and oh field God. stars Rose Robinson and Wilma Rudolph <laughs> to tennis.